There is absolutely nothing happening in the world this evening, so here's another the Gibby 3340 video. Um, so I'm back in the car and I'm back considering uh, some air conditioning parameters. I've got uh, uh, obviously it's on the V Packer here, boys. As you can see, I'm in my uh, four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive uh, version, so it does in fact have the uh, auto uh, air conditioning or climate control system. Um, if you recall, uh, maybe a couple of years recall, um, I talked about uh, the air conditioning system and how the clutch would cycle on and off based on the evaporator uh, temperature uh, closing in on the near zero point before. And uh, it would cycle as it approached near zero, uh, the clutch would kick out, the evaporator temperature would rise, of course, and it would cycle on that on that particular day in the conditions that I had, which were considerably cooler than what I have actually right now. You can see there. Um, how does that happen? How does the car display one temperature for an outside air temperature and the scan tool display another? Huh mystery don't know um anybody got any ideas any suggestions uh, maybe there's a correction of some sort that's applied in the algorithm i don't know because i'm sure the uh um the sensor up front's probably corrupted by the the temperature of the engine itself just the heat radiating uh, in a stationary situation i don't know it was probably something to that i'm off topic here um back to uh, what i'm actually trying to make the point about boys um so i was making that point in a wee video and i was using my other scan tool at the time i was using my autel and uh one of the fellas uh that watches it actually asked a very good question uh, I'll, I'll cut to that right now and uh, i'll show you his question so there you go boys there's the fellas question i won't read it i'll let you read it for yourself but i thought it was a very good question so I went on to answer it based on what I had known at the time, but I'll let the video speak for itself that follows. So that's a fair enough question. The fella says, well, how do I know that the clutch on the compressor is actually operating um, based on the evaporator temp, the anti-icing function, and not as a function of pressure? Wow, that's a really good question, right? So I'm out here and I'm taking a closer look at things and what we can do um, to prove the point is I've been sitting here and I've been varying the temperatures uh, up and down uh, various fan speeds keeping the evaporator temperature off of the near zero mark you can see it's 8.5 degrees there now um, I've got the uh, compressor clutch uh, see the on indication there boys I've got that line highlighted for a reason so let's actually I'll step out the, up the engine RPM of course, the, the pressure will step up from the compressor because the, the compressor speed will go up, of course. And that will actually plunge the evaporator temperature because there's more, obviously, more uh, um, refrigerant being circulated at a higher rate, right? So, and then we'll watch the uh, we'll watch the compressor function. I can assure you, you're going to have to take my word for it, boys, because I don't think you're going to want to watch the screen for 10 minutes for me to make the point that this compressor has been engaged the in, virtually the entire time I've been sitting out here. As it has been for the length of this video so far, three, three and a half minutes in it, right? So I'm gonna step up the engine RPM, an interesting thing here. So watch the pressure increase. As the pressure increases, watch this temperature and the graph. The evaporator temperature is dropped. I can actually feel it. The duct discharge temperature has dropped considerably now. So just keep an eye. I'm at, uh, just approaching 2000 RPM. You can probably hear it in the background, I'm sure. There's the evaporator temperature at three degrees and dropping two and a half degrees. Keep an eye on the clutch. And the clutch is kicked out so the clutch kicks out the pressure of course drops and the clutch kicks back in as soon as the evaporator temperature rises so I think um, the fella asked a very very good question and I had based my answer 
uh, strictly on what I had read, boys, in textbooks. Well, the textbooks and reality are two different things, right? Textbooks are a good starting point, but I like to have the facts in front of me to be able to answer somebody definitively. Shit, sorry. So here again, we're approaching the we're approaching the freeze up. Watch the clutch. My neighbors are probably wondering why the hell I'm racing my car in my driveway and talking to myself, but that's all right. Anything in the interest of learning, huh? Well, I'm gonna drop the fan speed just a wee bit, boys, and I'll drop the evaporator temperature just a wee touch. And then the, there you go. There's the cut uh, again. As the temperature comes back up, I'll lay off the throttle and stop annoying my neighbors. And uh, the AC clutch comes back on. Well, one other thing that's interesting, boys, is uh, um, everybody reads about it, but it's not very often you get to see it, right? So the wide open throttle function, of course, if you uh, if you, you demand maximum power from your engine, it would make sense that the uh, the engine control module uh, strategy uh, would cut the AC so you can you know you can probably drop up a, a couple of horsepower from the uh, compressor right so let's see I'll, I'll blip the throttle and we'll see what happens there you go right you could see the cut out there I'll do it one more time you could see the cut out. so yeah that's interesting there's obviously a, a few things that are going to uh, cut out the clutch but uh, certainly the wide open throttle is one of them. Uh, but the normal uh, functioning is, uh, is based on the evaporator temperature because as you can see, again, the clutch has been engaged the entire time in these conditions, right? Well, essentially stop. Yeah, okay, I've dragged this out way, way too long, boys. I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that, right? That's it, cheers. Oh, hello.